I was an agnostic college student on my way to run the Austin 10K. And unfortunately I had this, or fortunately, I had this head on collision on my way to run the race. And I broke my back in three places. The uh, spine was compromised and three vertebrae were completely shattered. Pieces of the bone were pressing on my spine. I waited in the ER for 17 hours I remember reading 17% chance of death. I thought, nah, I'm young, I'm strong, I was about to run a race, there's no way I'm dying. So you can imagine my horror and my excitement and my joy when indeed I did die on that operating table. And being agnostic, I assumed that, you know, we just became nothing. You know, that when we died, there was nothing. Maybe our energy dissipated into the grass, and the trees and the earth. And, that was it. So when I had this, this deeper intelligence as a spirit, I was shocked because I placed so much emphasis on my brain that when my spirit form lifted out of my body, I was like, oh, I'm so clear. This is truly the true me. This spirit form is me. That body on the table is just a, a bloody piece of meat that they're operating on that I use as, as something to take me through this life but the real me is the spirit and it was so clear over there like in those first few seconds my intelligence felt uh more heightened immediately i felt like i could see the entire room i could see what the surgeons were doing i could observe a lot and understand a lot of information all at one time and you know we're not limited by eyes that look straight ahead when we're the spirit form we can just see everything then I saw these angels at, at the foot of the bed and I didn't call them angels. And I still, you know, I'm comfortable calling them light beings because they were composed of light. So if you imagine just this flowing energy, it looked kind of like robes. I didn't really see wings. If there were wings behind them, you know, they were just part of this flowing robe, but they looked ancient. They looked incredibly intelligent. They did have a, have a human face and this kind of curly, hair that was about shoulder length but they really could have been male or female they, i mean i just looked at them and they were beautiful the main thing is that their eyes were made of this light and they communicated with telepathy through their eyes and that's the part that really got me i remember thinking wow this light not only communicates to me but it's sending this healing into my spirit form and healing into my physical body and I remember thinking, those neurosurgeons, I bet they don't realize that the angels are assisting them because the angels very playfully said, watch this. And they sent this light through the back of the surgeons, through their hands, and it lit up my entire body. And I knew that I'd walk. I knew that I'd run. I knew that I'd have a life after this. And I knew that it was partially because of their assistance. And, you know, this was the 1990s. So you have to imagine that you know, Reiki is kind of common uh, knowledge, you know, that people use angelic realms to help people heal. At that time, I'd never heard of it. So this looked like the most far out scene, you know, I've ever seen in my life. I thought, wow. So this intelligence is working through the neurosurgeons for my benefit. How amazing is that? Um, the next part of the near-death experience occurred when the monitor flatlined and we've all heard that sound and that beep i knew meant my body was dead and it looked a little gruesome already my back was open and they also had my hip opened up because they were taking bone from my hip and putting it into my back and i remember thinking I don't think I want to watch how they're going to revive me. This is not going to be pretty. This is going to be really ugly. So I left the operating room. And when I was in the hallway, I observed my stepdad get a candy bar. And this became a verifiable detail later. But, you know, in the moment, I just remember thinking, oh, that's funny. I thought he was a health nut. He's eating a Snickers bar. And, and moved on from the moment. But I, I hoped that he might be kind to my mom in case I didn't come back. So even though the angels told me I'd walk and run again, I think there was this embrace of the spirit form. 
And immediately it's like, I was trying to take control of that and go, yeah, I don't really have to return, do I? <laughs> like this is, this can be just my reality from this point forward. The parts of the near-death experience that changed me the most was the next few parts, which was this feeling of oneness with everyone I'd known. And I think in these particular times, we need more of that. We need this understanding that what does all of this matter in 50 or 100 years? What matters is how kind we are to those around us. And this can include even people at a grocery store or a barista or anyone in our classes or people we work with that we're connected energetically, that we're more of a, there's this oneness of energy that flows through all of humanity. And when you're unkind to people, it reflects back to you in certain ways. So I felt this just like general love for everyone that I'd ever known and really kind of got it that when we leave here, all that we're taking with us is this kind of wish for humanity to do well, to be better, to be happy. Then I transitioned through that. Some people call it a tunnel or it was very quick for me. I was just in the night sky and I looked out and I saw all these beautiful stars and this light. I wasn't afraid. There wasn't a single moment where I was afraid in this experience. And that's what I want people to understand is that a lot of people live in fear of death when they're in the physical body. I understand that, but once you're there, it's not that scary. <laughs> it's just another reality. And so in that place, I felt the intelligence of God coming toward me. God showed me my life. I relived certain moments, moments that were most important to me were the moments where I was kind or I was in touch with God. Then um, God showed me that I should be perhaps better to people. At 22, I was a little judgmental, cliquish, and looked down on some people who actually prayed for me. I didn't like them because they, I don't know, they, they didn't go to my college, they didn't go to college at all. And so I just thought I didn't have anything in common with them, but it turns out their hearts and souls were very beautiful. And I could see this on the other side and I was embarrassed by how I had acted. And I thought from this point forward, I'm not judging people superficially. I'm looking at their hearts. Who are they? What is their true motivation in life? And are they good to others? And I think you know, now that lesson has played out so many times. There's so many manipulative people on this planet and so many people who don't come from that pure hearted place. And I think God was showing me there are some people who come from that pure hearted place and find them and make them your friends. And so I, I saw that very clearly and then moved on to this beautiful landscape with where the grass was beautiful, was so deeply green as if nothing had ever touched it there was no death no harm everything was just vibrant with life and my soul kind of hovered above this place i began to hear messages as i was entering heaven like love is all that matters all that we take with us be like a little child um these particular messages seem simple though and i remember honestly having a moment of like, oh God, please give me more. If I'm coming back, I need something more than a Beatles slogan of love is all that matters. Like maybe you need to give me some formulas or some gifts or something, you know, like this is not enough. Uh, love is all that matters. But what I saw is that when I met my grandfather, he was part of the unconditional love that I'd experienced in life. And he was the only person who had transitioned when I saw him, he gave me great peace. And I thought, well, all I have is the memories of love with him. I don't have the memories in that place of his dying form, of what he looked like when he had leukemia. I just remember his soul's desire to write stories to me, to connect with me, to be that loving grandfather, to be that figure in my life that showed me that I was important. And that was, that was beautiful. That's all that we had in that realm was the love that we had experienced. When he looked at me and he said, do you want to continue on? I knew this meant go to the light of God. So I just flew and my soul just like went towards and God looked like this bright light but it was more than a light, it was intelligence, it was magnets, it was something that changed me 
I, I can't describe how how shocking it was. Uh, I'd never experienced love like that before, only pieces, uh, like through my grandfather, through parents, through friends. But this was like, I call it an atomic bomb of love because it was so massive. It just hit me and I thought, wow, in physical form, we spend so much of our time not loving ourselves, not being happy with this circumstance, feeling anxious, feeling, I mean, we just spend so much of our time not really understanding that we're connected to the greatest love uh, that we can imagine and that we can all feel okay. We can all feel this bliss, that this is kind of our divine right and what we deserve, uh, no matter how we've been treated in childhood, no matter what we've experienced, every single one of us can connect to this love. I felt people's prayers trying to pull me back and I just remember breaking through them going, whatever. You know, like, I, I'm, I'm going towards God. God's awesome. And as I got closer and closer to God, I didn't want to come back here. This place didn't seem interesting after experiencing God. I thought I very much want to keep merging with God, going into that light and going into that beauty. At some point I was stopped and God said, with this booming voice, look down. And when I looked down, I saw this river, which I, I thought was like a river of life. You know, those people walking along in time. And I saw that some people had darkness around them and some people were just lights and they were connected to that light of God. Even though God was far away from them, they had that connection. And I thought, hmm, what is that darkness? And it looks so simple. It looked like, oh, I can just remind people to connect to God and that's all that they'll need. It didn't look complicated, like there are murderers down there or there are people doing really horrible things. It just looked like there's fear and then there's a connection to God and that's all there is. And so when God said, I'm going to work as a teacher, I, I was upset. <laughs> that was not what I wanted to do with my life. I'd grown up poor. I thought, no way, no, 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 and let's just stay here or give me a different mission. And God almost laughed at me, and that's when I was hurled back into my body. Why do we come here? I mean, that's a good question. I think to, I think our souls are almost like journeyers or warriors. You know, we're trying to learn something in a dramatic way by coming here. And those of us who remember it, you know, we've won in a sense. It's like, no matter what happens from this point forward, it's like, we won, we got it, we remembered, we're loved, we're gonna mess up, but we're gonna do the best that we can from here on.